In addressing inferential statistics, another powerful tool is called quadrant analysis. With average nearest neighbor analysis, essentially we're calculating the distance between a point and its nearest neighbor for an entire set of points versus an expected distribution for random points using a, a very simple formula that we looked at. In the case of quadrant analysis, we're going to overlay a set of polygons called quadrants, which are equally sized and equally spaced, and look at the distribution versus a random set, which we call a Poisson distribution. In this particular example here, we'll be looking at Guilford County DU vehicle collisions, Randolph County DU vehicle collisions. And in this case, we'll be looking at Guilford County DU vehicle collisions. We've shown some examples with these. First thing we needed to do is superimpose some polygons equally sized polygons, because we understand some of the challenges in working with census data counties, zip codes, or whatever, is that they're not equally sized or have the same number of people, so we need to calculate densities or something like that to kind of normalize these. There's a very simple formula here, and I'll, I'll kind of move it over here from my other screen. The length of each quadrant is e going to be equal to the square root of 2 times A over N. And we're looking at Randolph County. Randolph County has a size of 789 square miles. It's got an N, and in this particular case, we could just open up the attribute and see that we have 450 points here. We multiply this by two. And when we calculate this, we are going to get about 9,887 square feet. Okay, and I multiply the whole thing times 5280 because you'll see what we need to do in a second. And so this is about 1.7, 1.8 miles in size. Because essentially when we create these quadrants, this formula is useful because we want the quadrants to be big enough so that has, we don't have so many zero values, but we want the quadrants to be small enough so we have some spatial differentiation between all of these points. You know, if we only had four quadrants for this entire area, it would be hard to tell, look at the distribution for only four points and four frequencies. And so we have a utility here called Fishnet. And I'm going to go to Analysis, and Tools, and I'm going to type in the word Fishnet. And you can see here, under Data Management Tools, it allows me to create a new feature class here. And I'm going to select under my databases, under my particular project. I'm going to call this Fishnet. I'm going to call it underscore TJM. And then my default template, I'm going to be working from Randolph County. And you can see it auto-populates all of the northing and eastings in feet using my North Carolina state plane projection that I've been working with. And so I've implemented this formula here using the area, two, the number of points, and then I multiplied that number in miles times 5280, which is the number of feet in a mile because I know that I'm working in state plane, so I have 9887, here we go here. And under geometry type, I wanna type in polygon. I wanna select polygon, I don't want a polyline because I'm gonna be running a spatial join with these to count the frequency within each. I'm going to run this, and you can see what I have here. Now, when I look at this, and I look at these contents here, what's one of the problems you see? One of the problems you see is that these quadrants, some of these quadrants, and I'll get rid of the, the labels here, some of these quadrants, they extend to the extent of Randolph County, but they're not entirely contained within these. So if I were to select, say, this quadrant over here, it might not necessarily be fair in that only 25% of the county is located within the quadrant. And so when I start including this quadrant in analysis, essentially it's not going to necessarily be fair if the entire quadrant isn't in within the county. A couple ways to remedy that. One is to include a study area or include a buffer of deer vehicle collisions outside of the county that include this fishnet. Another way is that I can go to map, select by location, and I'm just going to select the fishnets that are entirely within Guilford County. 
that are entirely within. So I want to select the fish nets. TJM that are entirely within Randolph County. And so now you see, I'm just going to be working with these fish nets here. Okay, so I'm going to go to data, export features, and I'll just call this working. Oops. And one thing that I do like to do is get rid of these as I work through these. Okay, so next thing I want to do is now I'm just working with the fish nets that are entirely within Randolph County. I want to count the number of times each of these deer vehicle collisions occur within each fish net. This should be fairly easy to do. I'm going to get rid of this label as well. And I'm going to run a spatial join. I'm going to go to join. Add a spatial join. My join features are going to be my Randolph deer vehicle collisions. Here it is. Now I can map these. Watch, I can go to appearance, symbology, graduated colors. Let me see all the fields that I can map. I got join count. This is what I have right here. So, so I got this join count. So you can see these darker ones have more points, these lighter ones, obviously these yellows, looks like they have zero or one. And if I were to right mouse click, open up the attribute table, this is what we have. We have, now we have 188 quadrants. 188 quadrants. And now I have a frequency. Now this is a little bit easier to look at. Do I have to calculate density? No, I don't because each of these are the same size. So now I can get an idea as to where more are, where less are. Now I wanna do this with statistical significance. And I wanna essentially create a graph where my x-axis has the frequency, one, two, three, four, five. And then I wanna see how many times it appears. So I want to see how many times three appears, four appears, two appears, eight appears versus a random distribution that we would expect. Now we already have something like that. Let's call this summarize. So I'm going to right mouse click, click on summarize. Here we are. Now my output table, I'm going to select it. I'm going to save it in my quadrant analysis because I'm going to open this up in Excel now. So I'm going to go to my quadrant example. I'm going to type in, this is my output table, quadrant example, TJM. I'm going to save it as a text file. Okay. And here it's telling us, well, we'll just take the, the, the sum of the statistics and I'm going to click OK. All right, now I've saved it there. Okay, and we're going to open this up and see what this says. So we used a spatial join to calculate the frequency and then we summarized the frequency. Now, the next thing we do, and I'm going to highlight a couple of these formulas here, and I can show you what I'm doing here. I essentially calculated a fishnet right here. Using this formula, I calculated a fishnet. And now what I did here, I have got the number of points and the number of quadrants. Okay. I have the number of points and the number of quadrants that we have. So I'm going to go to my Excel. I'm going to open up what we just created. So I'm going to go to File, Open. And I'm going to go to my... Quadrant, quadrant analysis example here. All file. All right, this is the TJM. All right, so this is limited. Next, I created with a comma separated file. 
this is what we have. So we've got these object IDs, frequency counts. We ran these statistics. I'm going to click on delete. So essentially, this is what we're looking at here. And I'm taking this from chapter three in the book. So I have the points and I have the frequency. This is what we saw. Okay, this is what we saw. And what we want to do is compare it to a random set of points. And so of our 188 quadrants that were entirely within Randolph County, 24 of them had zero points, 57 had one, 51 had two, 31 had three, 20 had four, two of them had five, two of them had six, and one of them had eight. And if I really wanted to, I can go to insert, I'll type in seven and zero right there. Now next, we've got this little formula here where I'm going to run this thing called the Poisson distribution. And this assumes a, a random distribution of this number of points based on an average. Now look at this formula here. P sub x equals e to the negative lambda times lambda to the x over x factorial. All right, we don't have to calculate these. We have something, we have a formula in Excel that does this for me. Now we have this lambda is the average number of features per quadrant. Now, when I ran a select by location, there were 362 points within those 188 quadrants that were entirely within Randolph County. Because remember, we started with exactly 450 points, but some of those points were on the fringes of Randolph County that weren't, that weren't within quadrants that were entirely within Randolph County. So we've kind of teased some of those out. So we have 362 divided by 188 gives me this lambda number. Okay, so this lambda number we get from, here's the 188 quadrants. And then I have Randolph County here. If I were to do select by location, my input features would be Randolph deer vehicle collisions that intersect with this working. And so now we're just looking at these points right here. And there's 362 of them. And you can see this right here, 362 of those. So when I do 362 divided by 188, I get about 1.9255. And so now all I'm going to do is compare this frequency to a Poisson distribution. And so I'm going to give it word Poisson, and I type in the word equals, and whenever I type in equal, we're going to do a formula. And I'm going to type in the word, start typing in P-O-I-S-S, P -O -I -S -S, Poisson distribution. What's it ask me for? X. What's my X going to be? Well, this is going to be the column. The mean is going to be 1.9255. Three one nine, and then the last thing it asks for true or false if it's um, cumulative. And I'm gonna just type in false. Yeah. And so, I would expect, based on this distribution, for there to be fourteen point five percent of the points have zero, twenty eight percent have one, 27% have two, 17% have three, 8% have four, 3% have five, 1% have six, 0.2% have seven, and 0.006%. Well, that's great, and that's all great, but really what do I wanna do is the expected. And this is just gonna be equal to this number times 188. And now what do we see? All right, we've got 27, 52, 50, 32, 15, 6, 1. Now, can we have 15.4 or 27.4 frequency? No. So I can type in the word round, R-O-U-N-D, here, round it to zero points. So now I've got 27, versus 53, versus 51, versus 33. So in Randolph County, 
I would expect with the random distribution to have 27, I got 24. With 53, with one, 53, I got 57. For two, it was 51 and 51. Now, who wants to make a graph out of this? So now I can just graph this. I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to go over to View, I'll Insert, Charts, and then I got a graph. And so now in, in blue, I have what I saw for this set of points. In orange, what I would expect with a random distribution using this Poisson formula. And I can run something called a conglomerate smear off test that essentially looks at the area between these curves to see if they're statistically different. Now, we previously saw with average nearest neighbor analysis in a previous video is that when we ran average nearest neighbor analysis, it confirmed that this set of points was most likely random. And so this Poisson distribution in addition to creating nice, pretty density or frequency charts, because density and frequency are the same here, it also reinforces the fact using another entirely separate global metric that it's also random or most likely random according to this. And we, now we have another graphical output that we can do for this. So in conclusion, we've got the Poisson distribution, which is a set of tools that utilize spatial analysis like your select by location, spatial join with some summaries and bring it into Excel to create nice, pretty charts that highlight statistical significance. Most of these could be done in Excel or, um, sorry, not in Excel, but within ArcGIS Pro, but we brought it into Excel because it was a lot easier to calculate the Poisson distribution because there is a formula, a program formula to do this in Excel that might not exist in ArcGIS Pro.